The simple truth is, good Muslims are bad people. Islam makes them that way. While there are plenty of bad Muslims who are good people, they are as impotent as bad Nazis in the Third Reich or bad communists during Stalin's era. The Quran defines good and bad Muslims for us. It says a good Muslim is a jihadist, a man who leaves his home, sacrificing his wealth and life, fighting in Allah's cause. Allah says they will be rewarded with stolen booty if they survive, or with a heavenly bordello if they die. Bad Muslims, on the other hand, are peaceful. Allah calls them hypocrites because they are unwilling to fight. He even says that peaceful Muslims are the, quote, most vile of creatures, unquote, and that hell's hottest fires await them. If you are a peace-loving Muslim, your God hates you. Good Muslims, those who read Islam's scriptures long before I cracked their covers, planned, funded, staffed, executed, and celebrated the terrorist attacks of 9-11. They proudly told the world what they were going to do, terrorize Americans and Jews into submission. They boldly proclaimed why they were going to do it, for the advancement of Islam. They even told us who they were, good Muslims. But we ignored their announcements. It was as if on the morning of December 7, 1941, nobody noticed the rising sun insignias on the planes bombing Pearl Harbor. The bombers of September 11, 2001 wore insignias too. Theirs was a crescent moon. For those who support the politically inspired notion that terrorism is not condoned by Islam, that terrorists have corrupted an otherwise peaceful religion, consider this. The world's foremost authority on the Quran is Sheikh Abdul Rahman. He is the senior professor of Quranic studies at Islam's most prestigious university, Al-Aqsar, in Cairo. Today, the sheikh is a convicted terrorist, serving time in an American prison for the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center. If the Quran espouses peace, that's hard to explain. The conflict between truth and perception doesn't end there. Rahman's disciples an Egyptian sheikh and a Saudi terrorist, Osama bin Laden, told the film crew that Islam was their motivation for the second bombing. Quote, Everybody praises the great action which you did, which first and foremost by the grace of Allah, unquote, the sheikh began, quote, This is the guidance of Allah and the blessed fruit of jihad, a beautiful fatwa. May Allah bless you, unquote. Bin Laden agreed, quote, We calculated in advance the number of casualties the enemy would suffer and who would be killed based on the position of the planes as they hit the towers. I was thinking that the fire from the gas in the planes would melt the iron structure of the buildings and collapse them. This is all that I had hoped for. The sheikh replied, Allah be praised. He shared how Muslims watching television exploded with joy, telling bin Laden, quote, Egyptian TV ran a subtitle below the images of the crumbled buildings, in revenge for the children of Alaska, Osama bin Laden executes an operation against America, unquote. Bin Laden replied, the brothers who conducted the operation knew they were on a martyrdom mission. Allah bless their souls. Al-Qaeda was actually accepting credit for a terrorist act it did not conceive. The plan was concocted, staffed, and financed in the Al-Qaeda Mosque in Hamburg, Germany. Today, the mosque's imam still preaches fundamental and uncorrupted Islam. He doesn't need to twist it, interpret it, or take it out of context. The imam's message is for all Muslims, and it is preached in every mosque. Listen as he reads the verse from the 8th surah, the one I disguised earlier. These words come directly out of the Qur'an's spoils of war surah. Allah has sent you from your homes to fight for the true cause. Allah wished to confirm the truth by his words. Wipe the infidels out to the last. I will fill the hearts of the infidels with terror. 
So smite them on their necks in every joint, and incapacitate them, for they are opposed to Allah and his apostle. Whoever opposes us should know that Allah is severe in retribution. The infidels will taste the torment of hell. So when you meet them in battle, do not retreat, for all who turn away from fighting will bring the wrath of Allah on themselves, and their abode will be hell. It was not you who killed them, but Allah who did so. You did not throw what you threw. Allah did so to bring out the best in the faithful. Using this reasoning, it was the Islamic God, not Muslims, who flew the planes into the World Trade Center. So fight them until all opposition ends, and Islam is the only religion. Now you know the truth. Allah wants infidels wiped out and terrorized. That makes war and terror mainstream Islam. And Allah was just getting warmed up. If you meet them in battle, inflict such a defeat as would be a lesson for those who would come after them, that they may be warned. Surely the infidels cannot get away. Prepare against them whatever arms and cavalry you can muster, that you may terrorize the enemies of Allah. Reading Allah's orders out of the Quran's eighth surah, imams preach, O prophet, urge the faithful to fight. If there are twenty among you with determination, they will vanquish two hundred. If there are a hundred, then they will kill a thousand infidels, for they are a people devoid of understanding. This is the math of terror. It is possible because infidels are ignorant of Islam. And you should know, the Quran defines infidels in the fifth surah. They are surely infidels who say Christ, the Messiah, is God. So as not to be accused of unfairly singling out a uh, less than peaceful surah from the Quran, listen to how Allah recruits suicide bombers in the fourth surah. Those who barter their life in this world for the next fight in the way of Allah. Whether he is killed or victorious, a glorious reward awaits. Urge the believers to fight, to keep back the might of the infidels, seize them and kill them, Wherever they are, Muslims who sit idle are not equal to those who fight in Allah's cause with their wealth and their lives. Allah has exalted those who fight for Islam. The Islamic Sirah proclaims, Ishaq says, Our onslaught will not be a weak, faltering affair. We will fight as long as we live. We will fight until you turn to Islam, humbly seeking refuge. We will fight not caring whom we meet. We will fight whether we destroy ancient holdings or newly gotten gains. We have mutilated every opponent. We have driven them violently before us at the command of Allah in Islam. We will fight until our religion is established. And we will plunder them, for they must suffer disgrace. Need more proof? Are the deeds of the most respected Quranic scholar, the words of the most illustrious Islamic terrorist, and the scripture readings of the most revered imams insufficient? After all, a senior Saudi sheikh said we shouldn't listen to bin Laden because he was an unlicensed cleric. Never mind that the popularity polls show bin Laden's approval rating at 75% among Muslims, much higher than any other cleric or leader. Then consider this quote from the Saudi ruling family's favorite imam, al Buraik. He's not only licensed, he's atop the pecking order. Prior to a telethon hosted to enrich the families of Palestinian suicide bombers, this esteemed cleric said, and I quote, I am against America. She is the root of all evils and wickedness on earth. Muslims don't take Jews and Christians as allies. Muslim brothers in Palestine do not have any mercy or compassion on them, their blood, their money, or their flesh. Their women are yours to take legitimately. Allah made them yours. Why don't you enslave their women? Why don't you wage jihad? Why don't you pillage them? Thank you. 